Recently, I replaced the hard drive on this laptop with an SSD, thereby decreasing boot time and increasing performance. That left me with the old HD card, which is still good for storage. So I want to repurpose this card in my workstation. The problem is it has an operating system on it, so I need to wipe this clean. First thing I needed to do was to get a SATA adapter to USB so I could hook up the drive to the computer. Now we go to the startup menu, type in CMD, tell it that you want to run that as an administrator. Yes, that gives us a screen here. And now we're going to type disk part. Enter. We want to type in list space disk. Enter. We get a list of all the disks that are attached to the computer. Disk zero is our operating system for this laptop. Disk one is the external disk. So now we just need to type select disk one. Make sure to put a space in between the words. Hit enter. The system returns a prompt telling you that disk one is selected. Now you type clean. And before we hit enter, you must make sure that the disk that you selected is the one that you want to work on, because this doesn't give you any safety prompts after this, it just executes. So in our case, I'm 100% sure that disk one is the external drive, and therefore I'm okay with hitting the enter key. After a few seconds or minutes, you should get a disk part prompt and above that, it tells you that it succeeded in cleaning the disk. The last thing that we do is right click on the start menu, select disk management, and you'll automatically get a prompt to initialize disk one because it has been totally wiped out. So we'll, we will allow the computer to do that. When done, we see the size of the drive and that it's unallocated, and that's fine for our purposes. We can either format it here or on the new computer. Since we're here, let's right click on it, and we want a simple volume, because it's not gonna be a boot disk. And we'll take the default. We wanna use the entire partition, and we do not want to assign a drive letter. Hit next, we'll name it near archive, as I will use this just to archive data that I want access to, but that I don't use every day. Then we click on next. It gives us a summary of what's about to happen. We hit finish and it's executed and it's partitioned and we're ready to go with this drive. So now all we do is disconnect the drive from this laptop, and we're ready to install it on our workstation. This is a Cooler Master MC500 case, and it allows for the installation of an SSD card here, here, or behind the motherboard backplane. Before I can install the hard drive, I have to look at the SATA connections and see which are available. Because I'm using two NVMe SSDs, these connections here and here are not available to me. This one and this one is, this already has two SATA cables going into it. This one only has one. So what I need to do is just plug my new hard drive into the available port here. The existing blue SATA cable has a 90 degree connector on it, which was blocking the available port below it. So instead, we're just gonna use two new SATA cables that are straight through, so that way we can access both the upper and lower ports with each of the new cables. With the bottom cable already installed, I go in, it's clip side up, and we insert 
the second SATA cable. Make sure it clicks. And now we can connect these ends to the appropriate devices. I route my SATA cable out to the side of the computer. I have a port that's underneath the motherboard that gives me access to this SSD holder. So all I have to do is unscrew this, mount my hard drive to this caddy, and the cable will come right here. I could have also taken the cover and mounted it here, thus placing the hard drive out of sight, but I prefer having a nice consistent look with the two covers in this area. To mount the drive to the Cooler Master caddy, all we do is flip it over. There are four screws there. You're gonna put four screws here. The terminals are gonna go that way. So you simply slide it into place. It's a tension grip here. So it's really not gonna go anywhere. And you'll need to find four screws to secure the drive to this case. It's times like this that you're thankful you held on to those old computer screws. While we have a SATA connector here, we don't have any power and all the power cables are being utilized for all the other drives. So which means I have to find another connection off the power supply. Fortunately, I did keep all the leftover cables from my installation. So I have a SATA power cable that will fit here and then I can use one of these coming behind to power this drive. With the power cable routed through and our SATA cable, all we have to do is make our connection to the back connectors of the hard drive. And the cables are keyed so they only fit one way. After the connections are made, you put on the caddy, thumb screw tightens it down, and you're all set to put your glass or metal slides back on and turn on the computer. After starting up the computer, we launch disk management and here we see Near Archive. It's our terabyte drive. And the reason I took that drive off the laptop and put it here is because it spins at 7,000 RPM. So it's actually not a slow drive as far as spinning drives go. So it will come in handy in our workstation. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.